Welcome everybody to the MedTech Innovator 2020 Finals. Uh, we're really excited to virtually see you all today. Since its inception in the US eight years ago, we now have 340 alumni companies with over 60 products launched already into the market and having raised a record 2 billion in follow-on equity funding. In Asia, this is our second year of the competition. Um, in total, over the last couple of years, we've had over 350 companies apply from across the region uh, to participate in the competition. This year alone, we've had 200 applicants and already 20 companies chosen to join the accelerator. And of course, today, uh, the five finalists who will present um, for the winning prize. And Frederick, of course, will tell you more about the winning prize. So I wanted to say a little bit about why competitions like this are so crucial for our region. We have over two thirds of the world's population, a population that is aging with rapidly rising chronic diseases. And a large part of this population has limited or no access to healthcare at all. So we need innovative solutions, innovative solutions from across the ecosystem, from large companies, but also from startups like yourself, if we're going to be able to tackle these massive challenges. And I think that's why um, APAC Med partnered with MedTech Innovator so that we could support in creating this pipeline of innovation. I'd like to wish the very best to all the five finalists today. And of course, we look forward to congratulating them and the winner. So now I'm going to pass over to Frederick, who will take it from here. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Harjit. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and a very warm welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, as many of you are aware, MedTech Innovator is a nonprofit with a singular mission to ensure that transformative innovations reach patients. This is our eighth year globally and our second year here in Asia Pacific. We are the world's largest MedTech accelerator by far, according to recent industry research. The MedTech Innovator Asia Pacific Grand Finals are really the culmination of months of hard work by many individuals and by many organizations. Our 2020 program in Asia Pacific kicked off in February with uh, 20 startups invited to pitch from hundreds of applicants. Reviewers from our corporate partners and invited Asia-based healthcare VCs and local domain experts and took their time to evaluate each of the applicants. Back in 2019, we held our pitch events in Tokyo, Shanghai, Singapore, and Sydney. Given the COVID-19 pandemic, we had to take our regional roadshow online this year. Four planned in-person pitch events across the region were replaced by six online events. We've been thoroughly impressed with the quality of the presentations, the passion of the founders, and the breadth of innovations focused on transforming the lives of patients in Asia Pacific and beyond. Together with our corporate partners, we then selected the 20 best startups to go on to our three-month virtual accelerator. Some of the key components of this year's accelerator program are one, corporate mentorships, two, tailored educational weekly webinars featuring experts from across the region, and three, the opportunity for each startup to pitch at the APAC Med Virtual Forum, which was held back in September. Our selection committee then met and uh, had the unenviable task of selecting the five top companies to go on to today's finals. And here we are today at the end of the journey, uh, and with that, I will uh, hand over to our MC for today's event, Darling in from Los Angeles, California. Please join me in welcoming MedTech Innovator CEO, Paul Grant. Thank you, Frederick. Hi, everyone. I'm Paul Grant, CEO here at MedTech Innovator. If you look on the slide next to me, what you'll see is a picture of the MedTech Innovator graduating class from Asia Pacific in 2019. These are 20 companies that truly are transforming the healthcare ecosystem in Asia Pacific. And our mission is to make sure that these entrepreneurs succeed. Because really, when you think about it, it's the innovators who are helping patients live longer, healthier lives, 
and they need our support to do so. What you see here now, next to me, is the MedTech Innovator 2020 cohort. These are companies all across Asia Pacific who are working tirelessly day and night to make sure that patients are healthier, that patients live longer lives. And these are the people, we have to remember that there are people behind these innovations. It's not just technologies, it's people. And that's what we're here to celebrate today, are these innovators. Now, MedTech Innovator has been working for eight years to do what we do all around the world. You'll see some of our highlights over here on the screen. We have 320 companies that have graduated our past cohorts. Um, with 20 new companies coming today from Asia Pacific, that makes it 340 companies that are part of our portfolio. These companies have gone to raise over $2 billion in follow-on funding. There's many great things here that I'm very proud of. The one I'm gonna point out singularly is that these companies have 74 products that are now on the market, and that's what this is all about. MedTech Innovator could not do this on our own. We are very fortunate to work with some of the leading multinationals in healthcare, starting with Johnson & Johnson, who was our founding sponsor and MedTech Innovator, and who also was responsible for helping to bring us to Asia Pacific. And they're joined by a number of additional partners, Align Technology, Enterprise Singapore, Nipro Corporation, Oliver Healthcare Packaging, Olympus Corporation, and Siemens Health and Ears. These companies support us not only financially, but with their people. They are the ones who are helping to mentor these companies and make sure that they're successful in their missions. As Frederick mentioned, the search ends today. We started with over 180 companies who applied. We invited 50 companies to pitch in various pitch events. We down-selected to 20 companies who are now part of the accelerator. Of those, after spending months and months working with our corporate partners and other mentors, we selected five finalists to compete for you here today. I wish we could have selected more because in truth, all of these companies are deserving of being here on the final stage, but it is a competition and we had to choose five. Um, there will be one grand prize winner and four companies will serve as runner-ups because each of them is, de is deemed a winner for making it to the finals. I am incredibly proud of our 2020 MedTech Innovator Asia Pacific Accelerator cohort. These companies hail from all across Asia Pacific, including countries like India, Singapore, Hong Kong, South Korea, Estonia, the United States, China, Japan, and Malaysia. All right, let's all congratulate the MedTech Innovator 2020 Asia Pacific Accelerator Cohort. Raise your trophies, everyone. All right, so let's meet today's judges. You see them here next to me on the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce each of them. Kiyoshi Miyake from Olympus Corporation. Hi, I'm Kiyoshi Miyake. I'm a senior expert of a technology scouting and collaboration of Olympus. Olympus is doing the business in endoscope and the surgical, uh, surgical products field. So the bet uh, we are seeking a new or more innovative solutions. So therefore, the, we are the partners with the medical innovative. Thank you. Julie Tay from Align Technology. Hi everyone, I'm Julie. I'm the SVP and MD of Align Technology. We are the clear leader in a clear orthodontic category, a fully digital platform that we offer to doctors. And we're all about transforming smiles and changing lives. This is the first time that we're participating in MTI and sponsoring and, you know, we're really impressed by the process and by all the innovations we saw. Thank you. Tomoko Ishikura from Nipro Corporation. Hi, I'm Tomoko Ishikura. I'm a business development advisor for Nipro Corporation. Nipro is a Japanese medical device company of renal, vascular, surgical, and interventional radiology products. And we are actively seeking investment and partnership opportunities in companies that are innovative and bring great value to the patients and the healthcare providers. It's a pleasure to be here. Florian Belolavic from Siemens Health and Ears. So thank you, Paul. Um, yeah, I'm Florian Belolavic. I'm heading the strategy and business development department for Asia Pacific. 
Um, I'm working for Siemens Health Engineers, a global provider of medical equipment for imaging, but also having products for advanced therapy and also in the lab diagnostic area. Um, we decided to partner with MedTech Innovator because we strongly believe in the innovation power here in Asia Pacific. And we can see that with all the participants in this year's um, program. And I'm looking forward to that grand finals because the finalists are quite strong and uh, I'm looking forward to the pitches. Peter Hawks from Johnson & Johnson. Thanks, Paul. Yes, my name is Peter Hawks. Uh, I'm Head of Business Development for Johnson & Johnson Medical Devices here in Asia Pacific. And we're really excited to be a part of MedTech Innovator here in Asia. We have uh, been a part of MedTech Innovator uh, for the past seven or eight years, uh, both in the US and now for the past couple of years here in Asia Pacific. And we truly believe that and excited about the innovation that's coming out of Asia Pacific uh, in Asia and for Asia Pacific and beyond. Uh, and really looking forward to today. Thanks, Paul. Now, as you know, this is a competition and you're gonna get to choose the winner. First prize today, 150,000 US dollars, as well as runner up prizes of $10,000 for each of our other finalists, sponsored by the companies you see here on the slide. So let's meet our finalists. You see them all here on the screen next to me. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce each of these companies. They're gonna go ahead and give you a short pitch, approximately three to four minutes, followed by three to four minutes of Q&A from our judges. If any of the companies go over in time, we'll just give them a little bit less in Q&A. So let's go ahead and start with our first company of today, Sebastian Bakti from Excel. Thank you, Paul. My name is Dr. Sebastian Bakti, and I'm the founder and CEO of Excel. I'm not addressing you from our head office in Singapore today, but from the front line, from our R&D center in Bangkok. Here in Thailand, we work on something many have tried, but no one has mastered pain-free early cancer detection. I don't have to tell you that detecting cancer early when it is still curable is one of the biggest medical challenges of our time. There are 200 different types of cancer in the world, but only one screening method that actually prolongs your life, the pap smear. All other screening tests simply find cancer too late. That's true for simple ones like mammograms and for fancy ones like DNA sequencing. As a medical doctor, this has been frustrating me all my life. But there's good news too. Cancer screening doesn't have to stay broken. When aggressive tumors start to grow, even when they are less than one millimeter in size, they shed cancer endothelial cells into your bloodstream. But these cells called TCEC are extremely rare. Think one cancer cell in 5 billion healthy cells. So for the longest time, they have been considered undetectable in clinical routine until now. Excel has developed a platform technology to isolate, visualize, and analyze a single TCEC in a 10 milliliter blood sample. It consists of three modules that cover cell isolation, fixation, and multiplexing on standard microscope slides, followed by automated cell analysis using our own proprietary AI. So what you see behind me is a working system that has been patented, tested, and published. It can be deployed in any routine pathology lab around the world. What does that mean? It means that we are tapping into existing infrastructures and that we can bring it to market faster and more affordably than competing technologies, for example, DNA processing. Our first clinical application is an early detection test for prostate cancer patients. It has been validated in two clinical studies and is already listed with the leading private hospital chains here in Thailand. The third multi-center study is currently underway in Singapore. This study will lead to CEIVD certification and allow us to launch there next year, followed by Australia and Europe. Um, but prostate cancer is only the beginning. As we speak, we are working with leading university hospitals in Thailand, Singapore, and Germany on additional TCEC tests. Uh, they are covering lung, liver, and colon cancer, as well as leukemia and melanoma, running on the very same platform. I am proud to add that we have achieved all this with uh, spending less than three and a half million US dollars since 2016. But what is most exciting is that everything we learn directly feeds into our big vision, a 
a general cancer screening test that is digitized, scalable, and accessible for everyone, anywhere in the world. To make this all happen, we have assembled an amazing multinational team with decades of experience in clinical medicine and research, engineering, software, brand building, and sales. They don't just have the right skill set, but also the values and the drive to execute that you need in these challenging times. They are all holding their breath right now because we know that MedTech Innovator is the perfect platform to let the world know that Excel has found a way to make cancer screening work. In fact, we are at that critical stage now where we need to take our technology to the next level from Asia to the world. And MedTech Innovator can help us get there. Winning this competition will help us launch our prostate test in Singapore and open our first European office in Germany by June next year. You see the lab working away behind me. So, so trust me when I say that this is the start of making a true difference in the lives of millions of patients and their families worldwide. Thank you. Yes, Sebastian, thank you for the good presentation. So the, my question, uh, why did you choose prostate cancer as the first clinical application on the way to developing the much cancer uh, blood test? Yeah, so um, prostate cancer is evidently one of the biggest cancers, the biggest problems in, in cancer. And um, if you look into the data, it is also one with the biggest screening uh, problems. We actually perform 23 million, just in the US, we perform 23 million PSA tests, um, uh, 1.6 million biopsies to just find under 200,000 cancers. So every biopsy inflicts a lot of pain and cost and also side effects um, on the patient. Um, so there's, a, there's a really a huge room for improvement to make this more efficient. Um, and we also have to keep in mind that it works on the, on the commercial side, because if you find prostate cancer early, you spend about four and a half thousand dollars per patient. But if you find it too late, stage three or four, you spend $270,000 per patient. That's like a lot more. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Yeah, first of all, very strong presentation. I really liked it. Um, but you mentioned also the clinical evaluation. Um, so you already did something about that. Can you elaborate a little bit more about what you have done so far? Yeah, so our, our first uh, published study was a prospectively blinded trial. So that is as ambitious as you can get. You perform a prospectively blinded study in the actual um, populations of uh, prostate uh, cancer patients you want to use your technology in. We did that and we published that last year. Um, uh, we, we enrolled uh, 170 patients and we show that we can reduce the number of unnecessary prostate biopsies. So the biopsies performed on healthy patients by uh, about 70%. So that is very significant. We are now uh, running a bigger study with the 1,000 patients to also look at long-term outcome of our intervention. And we are running a third study in Singapore. So that is the first uh, study abroad. And that's a multi-center prospective divine uh, study with the two leading hospitals in Singapore as well, also supported by Accelerate, which is the commercialization arm of ASTAR. Thank you. All right, next we have Wei Bing Ung from Sporogenics. Hi, this is Wei Bing, and uh, I'm the CEO and co founder of Sporogenics. I'm sure some of you, or even one of your loved ones, uh, have had some kind of surgical operations at one point of time. And we all know that stepping out of the operating theaters is not the end of the story. What's important is the subsequent healing process when complications can occur. And Sporogenics is working on the solutions to improve surgical outcomes by the prevention of post-surgical adhesions. Right now, I'm relating to a personal experience where you can see in the pictures here, um, my mother and my sister, um, who is actually wearing a red, both wearing a red down here. They actually had the surgery some years ago. And although we were very happy that the tumors were removed for the cancer, but not to our expectation is that my mom actually were readmitted the day after discharge because she was vomiting nonstop. And that is exactly due to the small um, bowel obstructions as caused by adhesions. And the same goes for my sister who was readmitted um, years ago, even after the surgeries. 
So what I've seen myself is aligned with what has been reported based on surveys and uh, statistics. Up to 93% of patients develop adhesions following surgeries. And you can imagine the pain when the tissues between the organs stick to one another. Current solutions exist as uh, drugs, as well as the physical barriers, and none of these are ideal because we can see that the incidence rate is high at 93% even today. So the sporogenist is using a solution that is harvested from sunflower pollen. Yes, it's a sunflower pollen that is we have been consuming for centuries and it is biodegradable. But using our food technology processing, we are able to turn that sunflower pollen into a hydrogel film and also a spray-on gel. And what's important, the source of the materials, it is totally natural and it is sustainable. The value of the technology lies in the materials properties, as you can see here, the materials, the surface of the pollen is decorated with micro spikes. And with these spikes, its sutures is not needed because it stick to the surface right after the deployment. And therefore there's no migrations and there's no need for sutures. And what is more important, they decrease the adhesions by 90%. As you can see in the rats model study here, in the study group, we have the rats that is being dissected up to three weeks after the implantations of the bio barrier materials. And there's no adhesions or minimal adhesions as compared to the control group, which has strong and thick adhesions. As you can see here, that's happening between the intestinals, as intestines, as well as the um, internal abdominals uh, walls of the rats. And this is exactly the same kind of adhesions that might be happening to your loved ones if adhesions do strike them. So we have compared our products against uh, competitors and we are proud to say that our product is superior because it is not sensitive to moisture, it is not sensitive to blood. In fact, it can be used as a homostatic agent to prevent um, the stroke of bleedings. And especially the spray on gel is very suitable for keyhole surgeries. And because our raw materials is pollen itself, so it is very economical and it is very sustainable. The risk class of these products will be the same as the existing uh, products in the markets, it will be falling under a class three under the US FDA and a class three in the EU. Uh, in Singapore, it will be a class D. The global adhesion barrier market is huge. Last year, it was at 820 million and has been forecasted to grow to 1.3 billion in 2024. Sporogenics is born about a year ago, a few months before the COVID, and uh, we are grateful that we have managed to uh, come up so far one year later with the functioning prototypes. And as we speak now, a large scale animal testing is uh, ongoing. And we have done this with uh, 100K funding to date. And this is where the MedTech Innovator at Asia Pax uh, Pacific program comes in right now. And uh, we hope that you can support us by helping the company to go into the next level of mass manufacturing and to do a first in human trial clinical studies. And we are not asking for 19 million, we are only asking for 1.5 million to enable for us to bring a cost effective solutions that can be accessible but a huge population base. And this is our amazing uh, founding team members, myself, who has been regulators for many years, as well as scientific advisors, as well as clinical partners from the huge um, national university health system in Singapore. And we are so privileged under the MedTech program to receive mentorship from Olympus Johnson & Johnson and Oliver Healthcare. And together with our academic partners, uh, Tufts University in the US and SIT in Singapore, we are still trying very hard to bring our technologies to the markets to benefit more people. 
So finally, let's work together towards an adhesion-free world because sporogenics can't do this alone. So help yourself, help your loved ones to prevent adhesions from striking yourself or your family members. And please vote for us because we need your support and we need everyone to work together. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Wei Bang. Really interesting uh, technology. Uh, so my question is around potential other applications for the technology. Yes. Uh, thank you, Peter. In fact, that is one of the uh, uh, considerations as Polygenics first identified that we want to work on adhesions. And along the way, we realized that the core technologies could be potentially applied to a lot of other areas. If you talk about kinea protections, the same materials can be used as a kinea mesh to prevent the kinea from reoccurring, as well as for glaucoma surgeries. And uh, these are some of the potential applications of the same core technologies. Excellent, thanks. Next up, Anand Sivaraman from Remedio. Uh, thank you so much, Paul. Uh, my name is Anand Sivaraman, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Remedio Innovative Solutions. And I intend taking you through our journey in scaling eye care with cutting edge AI integrated medical devices. Now, apart from being celebrities, there is something common among the three photographs that you see down here. Bono, the lead singer and actor as part of the YouTube group, Mila Kunis and Judy Dench. They each have a critical eye disease that they've been able to manage and control the impact of primarily because of early detection. That could be glaucoma in case of Bono or AMD, macular degeneration in case of Judy Dench. They are not alone. There are more than 2.2 billion people worldwide who suffer from vision impairment or blindness. And what's more, 50% of the patients do not know that they are at risk. And lest we forget, this is not about the elderly alone. This affects people from all walks of life including the young adults, the pediatrics, and the elderly. 80% of this is completely preventable and treatable if detected early. However, less than 25% of the global population actually gets screened. And why is that so? One, because there's an insufficient doctor-patient ratio. We have inconvenient and invasive testing procedures that involve dilation and long waiting periods. And frankly, most of the devices that have been built to date have been designed for specialists that's ophthalmologists and optometrists, and not really for health workers and nurses. Now, how is Remedio seeking to disrupt eye care in its current form? We believe we may be able to do so by decentralizing eye testing, by making it accessible, convenient, and affordable. We believe that with our technologies and products, anyone can screen anywhere, anytime, be it in the local pharmacy, the supermarket, in the convenience of your home, or in a primary care physician practice. We build simple to use hardware and AI on the edge devices that allow for reports to be generated on the device within 10 seconds without the need for connecting to the cloud or the internet for the reports to be generated. What's more, our devices solve for all parts of the eye spectrum, all the way from the front of the eye diseases to the back of the eye diseases, as well as an all-in-one system that you see here that is fully, fully automated, allows for contactless screening and does roughly around seven tests within 90 seconds. All of these are based on three granted patents and four published patents from Remedio on the hardware side. As the only company to own both the hardware and the AI, we do have some unfair advantages. We do have a significant barrier to entry that gets created because of the platform ownership. We have pricing flexibility of either doing a CapEx-based model or a recurring revenue model based on usage. We have access to data under material transfer agreements that allows us to continuously release new AI algorithms. And finally, Doing both the hardware and the software allows us to own the customer experience through an integrated product experience. We have validated this problem and the market has indeed validated our solutions. Our devices have so far sold in more than 20 plus countries, 2000 of these devices impacting more than seven and a half million patients so far. We have marquee bouquet of existing customers in the retail space with Walmart and the payers like Blue Cross Blue Shield in the US through our teleophthalmology partner, Iris. And we've also been working very closely in India with the government in public health with the provincial governments of Kerala, Karnataka, and Tamil Nadu. We have independent clinical validations and peer reviewed publications that have helped build our brand. And these have been published in marquee journals such as JAMA Ophthalmology, Ophthalmology Retina, and Nature. 
our largest traction has actually been in the US and India, where the recurring revenue opportunity we believe is over 1 billion US dollars. And this is primarily through touch points that includes primary care, home health, pharmacies, ophthalmology clinics in the developing world, diabetes clinics, and public health centers. In these markets, we've actually been growing at a very steady clip of more than 82% CAGR and with healthy gross margins, and we actually clocked $2.7 million in revenue the previous year. Existing CPT codes can be used with our devices, and we are extremely excited with CMS launching a new CPT code for an AI-based DR diagnostic in 2021. We do have the specific leadership expertise that is needed to scale with the R&D and the engineering teams having significant experience having come out of MIT, NTU, and EPFL, as well as professional experience in GE, Allegan, and Novartis, and Evi Prasad I Institute. We seek an $8 million raise, of which $1.5 million has been secured from existing investors, and we intend using this to scale to a $40 million company with 25% recurring revenues by 2425. We've been extremely capital efficient and have raised less than $4 million to date to build a $2.7 million company. Finally, please join us and vote for us in our crusade against preventable blindness, and let's help the vision impaired find the Bono, Mila, or Judy in them. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Hi, Anand. Really interesting innovation. Thank you. Um, are you looking to diversify beyond AI for eye care? Great question, Julie. Um, I think um, we look at the eye as a window to systemic diseases as well. So while we start with um, the diseases of the eye, uh, both chronic as well as acute, we also are starting to see research uh, both within and within the industry that we are able to see uh, that can actually start looking at cardiovascular risk, diabetic neuropathy, all of which can actually be detected by looking at integrating the eye. So that's the way we are headed. I will still form the integrating organ, but yes, we intend going beyond just eye diseases and starting to look at systemic risk as well. Thank you. Hi, Anand. Thank you for the presentation. My question is also related to your business model. So your device is portable and then uh, those tests can be done outside the clinics. So especially in, in the US, when those tests are done outside the clinic, can you use any existing reimbursement? Uh, great question, Choboko. Uh, yes, indeed you can. Uh, for example, if uh, we are working with a channel access partner that's providing care at home, by using our devices, they can use existing CPT codes that are allowed for telemedicine, uh, teleophthalmology, if you will. So those are available. Of course, uh, when it comes to uh, a new telemedicine, new non-telemedicine based AI codes, there is one for uh, that CMS is launching in 2021 for diabetic retinopathy screening in primary care settings. So those can get used. So today, most of the sales that we have done allow for the use of existing CPT codes for telemedicine and teleophthalmology for use with our devices. Thank you. All right, next, Helena Beniskaya from Healthy Networks. Hi, Paul, thank you. I'm Helena, CEO and co-founder of Healthy Networks. We're a three-year-old startup focused on respiratory diseases. And we're just about to launch LungPass, the world's first low-cost A-powered app and stethoscope anyone can use to detect deadly lung conditions early. This is my daughter, Yara. When she started coughing badly, like any parents, we were terrified. We had no way of getting a quick diagnosis to know what to do. Well, thankfully, it didn't end up being life-threatening. But not everyone is that lucky. COVID aside, respiratory conditions are the second leading cause of death in the world. Pneumonia is the number one infectious killer in children, and COPD, a chronic condition that affects over 250 million adults, is the only leading cause of death on the rise. A lot of those cases can be attributed to an unclear or untimely diagnosis. Diagnostics, current diagnostic solutions, either like precision, like GP chest exam, or are often inaccessible like an X-ray or advanced blood test. Delay diagnosis leads to less effective treatment, longer recovery, preventable hospitalizations, and death. But what if that could change? What if an accurate early detection system became massively available on primary care and community level? Introducing LungPass, the world's first low-cost A-powered app and stethoscope for lungs. It turns chest sounds 
into objective biomarkers of lung disease. Families can use it at home to detect and monitor respiratory conditions. GPs and nurses can use it as a screening and remote monitoring tool. One investor shared a story with me. His father has been coughing for weeks, but didn't think much of it. When he collapsed at home, he was lucky that his daughter found him just in time for the medics to save his life. Undetected, pneumonia filled air sacs in his lungs with fluid, somewhat, somewhat like drowning. Well, lung pass can pick up those characteristic sounds early on. For example, there was a five-year-old uh, girl who came to a clinic with mild respiratory symptoms and a doctor was ready to let her go home and continue observation there. But lung pass picked up crackles, a strong independent predictor of pneumonia. So an x-ray was ordered and it confirmed the diagnosis. A child got her early treatment and soon recovered. Lung pass has been clinically tested and validated in studies invol involving over 350 patients. It has proven to be considerably more accurate than standard of care, AGP, in lung auscultation. And in our disease-specific studies, lung pass identified some patients that required immediate medical attention and could have otherwise gone unnoticed at that time. Families and individuals can buy lung pass out of pocket in retail or via e-commerce. And we're working on building health economic evidence to participate in value-based contracts with payers and be eventually reimbursed. We're just about to launch our product in Eastern Europe and expect to receive C marking in Q1 next year. And although we start in Europe, our big go-to-market is China with its unprecedented respiratory burden. With our team and co-partners, experts in research, manufacturing, distribution, and user experience, we're here to make an impact. Prevent millions of unnecessary GP visits and hundreds of thousands of hospitalizations, save billions for health systems. Our mission is to reduce global respiratory burden. Your support here in the FIDELS would accelerate lung path pass to APAC, a region where I believe our early lung disease detection system and bring the most benefit to society. Thank you. Yeah, so Elena, thank you for the presentation. Uh, really impressive what you have done so far. Um, so I'm interested about um, the willingness of people to buy it really out of the pocket. Can you elaborate a little bit on that one? Yeah, well, I can say they're totally willing to do that and COVID has only fueled the interest. We have quite a long list of people who are waiting very impatiently for the product launch upcoming in a few weeks. And the, how they perceive lung pass is like a second thermometer, but for lungs. Something that can help that keep their anxiety at bay when their child, themselves or their parents, a loved one is coughing and they don't know whether that's something deadly, dangerous, or not. Well, thank you very much. When we go to Peter next, Peter. Hi, thanks, Elena. Uh, my question is, uh, there are a number of uh, digital uh, stethoscopes on the market today. What, what makes lung pass uh, unique and different from the others? Yeah, thank you, Peter. It's a combination of affordability, precision, and value to the regular person. So there are beautifully designed digital stethoscopes that focus either strictly on professionals or on the telemedicine case. And they're all rather expensive, something north of $150. And Lumpass currently is the only device on the market that falls into the low cost category, is at the forefront of precision in digital health um, and lung sound auscultation, and also provides ample information and actionable guidance uh, across a range of respiratory conditions to the end user herself. Thanks. Hi, Helena. Hi. Take care of yourself, but it's very interesting, uh, you know, innovation. I have a quick question, right? What makes you think that, you know, you can really grow this startup into a global business? 
Yeah, it's true. You know, as a first time founder with no previous experience in healthcare or hardware space, I actually started out with a patient perspective. And I believe that's the one right one to have when your goal is to bring Lundpass for into every household. And the concept of our product is so simple yet impactful, which makes it rather compelling to people and easy to sell, not only to end users, but also to the very talented people who are building the product. And we've grown quite a stellar extended team with people who are have multiple exits uh, under their belt, but have put multiple healthcare innovations on the market and we're growing together. We're building it and doing it together. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now we have Nikhil Shanwadkar. Tell us the Cardosense story. Hi, I'm Nikhil, CEO and co-founder of Cardosense. Cardosense is making surgical navigation accessible to the developing world. Let me introduce you to Alan. Alan had a tumor very uh, close to the speech area of his brain, for which he underwent neurosurgery. He had a successful outcome and was able to speak again after recovery. Lucky for him, he lives in the United States. His surgeon had access to surgical navigation, which helped the surgeon remove all of the tumor without damaging the speech area. But for more than 5 million patients in the developing world every year, only 30% have access to surgical navigation. This year, 1.5 million patients in India and Southeast Asia alone will need surgery for conditions like tumors, hydrocephalus, and epilepsy. And 1 million of those will not even have the option to have navigated surgery. That's 1 million potential complications. A navigation system works by tracking the surgeon's instrument and displays its position on patient images so that the surgeon can reach targets inside the brain with maximum accuracy. Medtronic, BrainLab, and Striker, the three leaders in this space have systems that are expensive, complex, and too large, sometimes even being fixed to a dedicated operation theater, without the flexibility and simplicity required to operate in smaller and busier operation theaters these products cannot become widespread in the developing world. Cartosense introduces the most compact and portable surgical navigation product ever developed, IRIS. Made possible by our unique single camera optical tracking technology, this product has been built using cutting edge hardware and algorithms developed over five years. We are ready with a production equivalent device fully manufactured and we are about to start a pilot with a potential customer. We have already validated in our bench tests and early unsterile trials that the technology works and this has the required accuracy that's necessary by testing against global standards. We are about to start a clinical study in early 2021 where we will be validating the accuracy of our product on real patients. Our timeline is exciting. We are a few months away from entering the India market. We will be designated as class C by the CDS in India by the end of next year. And we are expecting to have a US FDA 510K approval by early 2022. After the approval, we will be scaling up to multiple APAC markets. We have a team, a dedicated team that has executed on this to date and is capable of bringing this technology to market. Dr. Gopal Krishnan, who is the head of neurosurgery at JIPMER, one of the leading academic hospitals in India, is on our clinical team. For today's incumbents, the market is a billion dollar opportunity. But the reality is that 30% of the market has been left untapped due to the limitations of their technology. Because of the advantages of our system, we believe that we can take a lead in the emerging markets. And in addition to neurosurgery, because our system is so compact and portable, we can take on the ENT and dental markets as well. We have the opportunity with all of our technology to open up a $3 billion global market. We have been able to do all of this with just 200,000 US dollars. And winning today will take us halfway towards our goal 
of raising $300,000 to enter the India market and complete our US regulatory submissions. Help us bring this technology to the 5 million patients in the developing world who do not have access to surgical navigation today. Thank you. Thank you, Nick, here. And, uh, it's, it's very interesting. So the, my understanding is your system is very compact. So the, but the, my question is, what is stopping uh, existing players from developing the compact and the portable product? Thanks, Yoshi. That's uh, actually a great question. So there are two aspects to this. From a commercial point of view, uh, the incentives of our competitors are more aligned towards extracting more value out of their products in the developed markets. But more importantly, uh, from a technology point of view, there's a lot of IP that we have developed. Um, apart from the cutting edge hardware, a lot of the IP is in the algorithms and trade secrets that bring in our advantages and this is not at all easily reproducible. Excellent. Hey, thanks. Thanks so much for the presentation. My question is, is 300K uh, really enough? I mean, what else could you do with more money? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Peter, for the question. So 300K is for us to commercialize our product in the India market and get a US 510K approval. Uh, we have an all-encompassing vision for how targeted surgery can create improved patient outcomes from precise planning to repeatable inoperative, uh, intraoperative guidance. And we have an R&D pipeline with uh, technologies such as VR, AR, and robotics integrations lined up. Uh, with more money, we can have a more aggressive uh, scale-up in the India and Asia uh, Pacific markets and also bring these more impactful technologies to the market faster. Nikhil, thank you so much for your presentation. So you talked about a uh, developed market and an emerging market. So when you try to compete in across those uh, markets, this um, VR, robotics, AR uh, technology, do you think that it can be a little challenging? Yeah, th thanks uh, Tomoko uh, for the question. So in fact, we, uh, like I said, we have a very all-encompassing vision for targeted surgery, which involves a precise pre-operative planning solutions, repeatable, repeatable intraoperative guidance, and uh, also post-operative image analysis. Um, we have already, in fact, a VR integration for the navigation system coming up next year. And this will, in fact, be the first VR-enabled surgical planning system, uh, which is integrated with a navigation product on the market. We also have a subsequent AR integration coming up, which will make, make navigation even more intuitive for the surgeon and precise uh, for the patient in the operation theater. So we are uh, excited about bringing this technology to the developing world, making it accessible. But then we also have uh, a lot of things in work so that we can compete equally well in the developed markets as well. All right. While people are voting, let's take a few minutes to hear from today's judges for their thoughts on how these companies did in the competition as well as our overall program. Julie Tay from Align Technology. It's really interesting uh, to see the, the, the creativity, the innovation. And I think what really it, it's important is a lot of these innovations have the ability to reach uh, extended uh, number of people, the millions of people. And a lot of them are cost effective, you know, and I think in a, in a region like Asia Pacific, uh, this, all this matters. So, uh, you know, affordable health care. So thank you, everyone. So um, I have to say, I'm really impressed by the presentations uh, that really exceeded my expectations. Um, I, I followed the first pitches and uh, during the first time of that program and how that all enhanced and how do you presented it it was really a, a, a great great hour to spend and uh, really enjoyed it and uh, i'm looking forward to get all that innovation into the market and that was really great thank you very much hi i i really enjoyed today's presentation all the companies are so amazing and uh it'll be really difficult to choose one for the finals and especially all the companies are already um providing products in the different markets or targeting different countries. That's very impressive and really looking forward to how those companies um, excel in the future. 
MTI, this program, so the very good opportunity for us, not only to meet a good startups and a good presentation, and but also so the four hour training opportunity. So the through the those sort of pitching session, the mentoring session, so the multiple hour innovators sort of joining in and uh, had a good discussion with uh, some startups, some companies. So it's very great, great opportunity for us. Thank you. Hey, thanks Paul, uh, thanks very much. Hey, what a great finals again, um, coming off the back of last year. So really impressed with uh, each of the finalists uh, this year. I thought they touched on really key unmet needs you know, click COVID was present in a number of areas and very relevant clearly at the moment, but also beyond clinical unmet needs, a number of them realised that uh, cost efficiency and, and an economic value proposition is so important uh, during, um, you know, today that we live in as well. So great presentations. I also, yeah, just the actual calibre of the offered presentations, they were sharp on point uh, and addressed, um, yeah, unmet needs and, and, and the like. So uh, fantastic. Great to be a part of it. All right, as a recap, in case you missed our five pitches, I'm gonna give each of our finalists one minute in their own words to tell us why they believe they should win the MedTech Innovator 2020 Asia Pacific Finals competition. Why do you think uh, you at Cardison should win MedTech Innovator Asia Pacific 2020? Yeah, uh, thanks Paul. So um, I believe that uh, we as a community need to make surgical navigation accessible to the patients that currently do not have access to this technology. And CartoSense can make this happen. Uh, we are very capital efficient and we can go a long way with the uh, grand finals prize. We are very close to commercializing our product. And if we win today, we will be able to bring our product to the India market and complete our US 510K submissions and move our product much closer to commercialization. Well, first of all, let me say that all the finalists just brought stellar innovations and everyone deserves the chance of winning. But I think in our case, respiratory is currently on everyone's mind and has the biggest impact on society, on the healthcare and on the economic. And our solution with early detection of deadly lung conditions if put into the developing markets, in the markets where the access to healthcare is somewhat limited or less than perfect, it will bring a huge benefit to society. Of course, COVID brought respiratory to the limelight and we did benefit from that, receiving incoming requests and interests from the government officials, from the private companies. And we've also seen a, a great impact on the conversion rates uh, for private individuals across the globe into the interest um, who were interested in our device. Why do you think Remedio should win MedTech Innovator Asia Pacific 2020? I believe that uh, we are uniquely positioned in that um, among the, uh, the cohort, uh, we are at a point where we've been able to reduce both the business risk and the technology risk by already showing validation and uh, uh, in two key geographies, that is US and India, show actually the business models. And we believe therefore it positions us to uh, really scale and have an impact on 2.2 billion people worldwide. And that's one reason why I believe that uh, we do stand uh, um, as one who deserves to win this prize as well. If you could tell us why Sporogenics should win MedTech Innovator Asia Pacific 2020. Yes, so we believe we should be the winners because we are offering something that we have never been um, realized that it is actually a gift from nature. So Mother Nature has given us so much, but it is something that we have always taken for granted. And now that Sporogenics is able to identify the special unique properties of these materials that we could potentially use for, for so many medical space and applications in a very cheap way. So in a way that all patients globally could have access to a very cheap solutions and alternatives. So that's why we believe we should be the winners. Sebastian, why do you think you should win MedTech Innovator Asia Pacific? Well, you know, if you take COVID away, um, 
then after COVID, cancer will be, as I said, the biggest challenge left in medicine. We have, we have metabolic disease, heart adipositas, diabetes, but these are things people can control through the life cycle. Cancer, we don't understand yet. We can't cure it. We need to find it early. That's our best, best bet. And we now have a technology that we, can, we are deploying now around the world in, in already in, in three countries on two continents. Um, and we need to accelerate this to, to make this accessible to as many people as we can as soon as possible. And I think that's why we should win this competition, honestly. As it's been a year since our 2019 competition, I thought it would be fun to catch up with last year's winners. So we have two of our companies here to talk to you. First, we're gonna hear from our grand prize winner, NDR Medical Technologies CEO, Alan Ga. So Alan, hi, it's great to see you. Hi, Paul. Nice to meet you again. Nice to see you again as well, Alan. So it's been about a year since you won MedTech Innovator Asia Pacific last year. Uh, I'd love to get some updates from you on what's been happening with NDR Medical. Uh, thank you for catching up on us. I mean, it's really a fantastic journey so far. Um, even though COVID happens, so far we are making a significant progress and all thanks to MedTech Innovator, um, really put us into the world market and giving us the, the limelight for that period of time. COVID did kind of slow us down for a little, but I, I guess so far we are doing well. Uh, some updates with regards to our progress. So far, we have managed to close our Series A once we have uh, won the Meta Innovator. Uh, the Series A comes from uh, Microport, which is a Hong Kong listed uh, MedTech company based mainly in Shanghai. Um, so far, that, that has been a fantastic uh, relationship with them. They're helping us with manufacturing, uh, kind of localizing the product into the China market. That's one part. The second part, fantastic news again, we have uh, managed to complete our CE certification. Uh, it's a class two device right now, uh, and we are ready for our market penetration and market access into the US. And so far, another good news as well, we, we are being admitted into StartX, uh, Stanford X uh, MED program, which is held in uh, California. Uh, so far, it's more, more likely a virtual event and we have been connecting with them, getting the network necessary. Uh, and there's, all this has not been possible without the help of Meta Innovator. Also, you know, of course, you know, you won the, uh, the 2019 MedTech Innovator Asia Pacific Grand Prize. So, uh, you know, I'd love, to, uh, I'd love to just quickly hear from you what that's meant for your company. I, I think that the price money does come in very, very handy because at the point of time, uh, I, I guess, unfortunately, COVID hits and uh, every single company is in the cash trap. So before we, we completed the Series A round, the cash usually help us tight over a significant period. Of course, help us uh, hire more people well, without hampering our growth plan. We still can carry on hiring because with, with the sum of money coming into the company, uh, beefing out our cash flow. Um, on top of that as well, it really put us... On the world market, we have been speaking to Siemens, j, &J uh, Medtronics, Stryker. I mean, those right after the event, we have made a lot of significant connections. Thanks so much, Alan. Uh, it was terrific seeing you and catching up with you. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul, for the opportunity to be involved in Meta Innovator and being part of the Meta Innovator family as an alumni, I hope. And our second place winner, from Anochi Care, CEO Shivani Gupta. Hi, Shivani. It's terrific to see you. I can't believe it's been a year. Yeah. Hi, Paul. Good to see you. I know it's been long, but wonderful. Good to see you again. So it was terrific to have you in MedTech Innovators Asia Pacific program last year. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what that program did for you and how it helped your company? Uh, yes, uh, sure. Thank you, Paul. Yes, uh, as you know, uh, InnoGicare works in the area of wound care and management and our technology uh, for facilitating faster healing of non-healing wounds uh, has got a different kind of visibility after MedTech Innovator. So I would like to mention something here, like after that, when we were hiring some of the interns from small, small portions of our work, so everyone knew it, what InnoGicare does. So thanks to this uh, platform, as well as the videos and the news which came into Biospectrum or MedTech Innovators website or the video you shared, trust me, before people reach out to us, they knew what we are doing. So I think lots of thanks to MedTech Innovator for that. 
and we had uh, access to lot of good mentors whether it, it was from the asia pacific uh, apec mint for, uh, forum or the medtech innovator connected us to lots of uh, introductions to the peer groups which we got through that platform that worked really well for us so one of the leading boon ke company uh, who was a part of showcasing during the medtech innovator they connected us for the collaboration so good networking good collaborations lots of visibility and lot of people showed interest to work with us that was wonderful which we got through this platform and uh, one thing which we still talk about in our team is uh, you and your team we learned a lot how to work as a team when we worked with your team so thank you thank you for all that which we again from a tech innovator so uh in the in the year since uh you were in the finals at medtech innovator i'm sure a lot's happened i'd love to hear some updates on the company yeah sure sure uh, uh yes it was last year in october when we met during the finals of medtech innovator and after that uh, journey has been wonderful there were some ups and downs i would say downs due to covid because lots of unplanned things happened but overall it has been a really good i would say uh, because lot lots of thing improved which we had not planned initially in our product journey also but we saw how the healthcare system will be changing so that was a silver lining that we included a lots of things in our technology which will enable our technology to be uh, to be utilized in post covid era especially in the home care settings and uh, the, uh, remote monitoring and those kind of things uh, um, our uh, clinical trials are almost completed so we are in the process of compiling the data to publish our results as well as we have started filing for our regulatory approvals so soon we plan to launch our product commercially so looking forward to that and the experience has been wonderful in one year lots of learnings due to covid lots of changes in the technology but things are going good Welcome everybody. Uh I have to say having seen a lot of finals over the years, those were five of the best pitches I have ever seen. Um I think anyone who is in the audience who's been at MedTech Innovators competitions would say the same. Um really unbelievable. Uh all these pitches were patient-centered. It was one of the things that really stood out for me. Uh I saw companies talking about personal stories, personal connections, you know putting the the patient at the center of the journey and really that's what i think all of us should be aspiring to do because this is really all about helping patients and we can't forget that and that's something that i think really came across in these presentations all right now um the important things we're going to do now are get into some of the awards we have several awards in addition to the grand finals that we're going to be giving out um we're going to start off with an award from enterprise singapore Now what I want to do first is tell you a little bit about our various partners. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation today, MedTech Innovator is a partner-driven organization. We have all of these incredible partners who are doing everything from mentoring startups to providing resources for startups. And in this case, Enterprise Singapore is a partner that we've been very fortunate to have for the last 2 years. Um most of the MedTech Innovator staff in Asia Pacific or all the MedTech Innovator staff actually for that matter is based in Singapore and so we're very lucky to be part to be partnered with Enterprise Singapore. Um it's an organization that supports that ecosystem and really does an amazing job of not only helping local startups but also bringing companies into Singapore and into the region. So we're going to start off today with an award that is the Startup SG Award from Enterprise Singapore. Audrey Locke who's the director of healthcare and biomedical enterprise uh for Enterprise Singapore is going to tell you about this award so I'm going to go ahead and let her do the talking. We are excited to present the Startup SG award. This award consists of a $30,000 grant prize and the winning team also gets the opportunity to take part in the Slingshot Global Startup Competition held next month where they stand to win additional prizes. Slingshot is held in tandem with Switch which is Asia's largest innovation festival. We look forward to seeing all of you there. The winner of the Startup SG competition is Excel Biotech. Congratulations to the team. May your innovations make a difference to patients around the world. Fashion Bacti. All 
right, Sebastian, um, why don't you say a few words? Well, thank you. That, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> and it's a, it's a big honor. I mean, Singapore, um, Singapore has, has helped us so much in the past two years. And um, I, this is, uh, yeah, we are really grateful for this. <clears throat> um, it, uh, thank you. <laughs> this is beautiful. Um, uh, we've been we've been relocating to Singapore last year because we we knew Singapore could help us just better than anybody else in the region, and um, this is just a, a beautiful uh, event. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, a fast track to the, uh, the switch competition, which is very exciting. So, um, so, you know, slingshot and switch, you know, this is big stuff. Um, it's a really great opportunity. Our company that won this last year went on to win the entire thing, um, Echo. So very exciting. Congratulations, Sebastian. All right, next up, um, we're gonna hear from Oliver Healthcare Packaging. Um, so uh, let me go ahead and uh, introduce uh, Alden uh, Velich, who's the general manager of Southeast Asia for all of our healthcare packaging. Um, we've been very lucky to work with all of our healthcare packaging this year. Um, this is a company that is focused on things like sterile barriers, and it's one of those little nuances that companies tend to not think about until it's much later in their development and then it's too late and they've made mistakes um, and really can have a huge delay on their time to market. So we've been very lucky to work with them um, and have them mentoring some of our startups. The ones that have worked with them as mentors have given us unbelievable feedback that they've really learned a ton. So we're extremely excited to have them as partners. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let uh, Alden tell you about the award because it is pretty special. So the Sterile Barrier Design and uh, Development Award is an award that Oliver provides to medical device companies that have novel uh, innovations. It really entails three components that medical device companies are required to pursue in order to launch their medical device in the market. The first element of the award covers the regulatory guidance for validation of a sterile barrier system. So there's multiple components in this, one being design, stability, process qualification, and the second being the test methods that are required. The second element of the award focuses on design. So here we evaluate the sterilization modality that the medical device is going to need to use, and then we provide a material selection and design uh, that is gonna be in use for the device. And the third component are the actual sample uh, developments and, and prototypes. And this entails us providing the initial samples, reiterations of the design, and then the final validation samples that have full material traceability that the medical device company can then use to go and do their third party testing and launch their medical device in the market. We would like to congratulate MAV as this year's winner of Oliver's Sterile Barrier System Design and Development Award. MAV has a compelling value proposition and they're looking to serve an unmet need in the market today. Oliver is excited to help them progress for this novel catheter device, which benefits aortic valve stenosis patients. Thank you very much. And I really appreciate that uh, we, I can get that great opportunity and I'm very excited and <laughs> what uh, I, I cannot uh find a word what what to explain it's, it's okay my... <laughs> no, it's yeah uh as you know that i'm uh now working as a full-time surgeon in the hospital so that mm -hmm. uh we i'm struggling to uh go forward the project to deliver my product to the patient to mm -hmm. improve the the treatment for the patient so yeah. I'm ha very happy to hear about this uh, opportunity. Thank you very much. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, congratulations again to Yusuke um, at MAV on winning that award. Um, that is pretty fantastic. <laughs> now let's uh, talk about some of these other awards that are coming up. Um, what this award that's next is truly one of my favorites. Um, MedTech Innovator has been very lucky for the last eight years to be working with Johnson & Johnson. And as I think many of you know, Johnson & Johnson, in addition to uh, being one of the largest multinationals in the world in healthcare, 
also has this incredible facility called J Labs. Uh, J Labs are located all over the globe. Um, in the beginning, they were in the US, then they moved along um, to, uh, to Europe, and most recently, they launched the J Labs in Shanghai, China, which we're incredibly excited about. The MedTech Innovator team got to spend some time there. It is an unbelievable facility. If you haven't Googled J Labs, um, I suggest you do it. Go ahead and look it up, um, and especially look at J Labs Shanghai, and you will want to move there, trust me. Um, so this is a really pretty amazing um, opportunity for a company every year in MedTech Innovator to win a place to live. Um, and I don't mean literally live, I mean a home for your company. Uh, this is an opportunity to be part of an ecosystem just like MedTech Innovator is an ecosystem. J Labs provides a community for hundreds and hundreds of startups all over the world to really be able to work together to leverage each other's resources, to learn from, uh, from investors and other people who visit their facilities. They also take people who are, um, who are experts in things like regulatory and clinical development, um, even doing a great pitch deck. You know, they have all these incredible people who come by and who work with the teams all over the world at j -Lab. So this is an amazing opportunity because that's something that people normally have to pay for. And through MedTech Innovator, we've been lucky to be able to give away at least three spaces at j -Labs every single year now between our US and our Asia Pacific program. So I'm very uh, pleased to be able to introduce Sharon Chan um, from J Labs. She's the head of J Labs um, in Shanghai and she'll tell us about this award and announce the winner. Sharon. Thank you, Paul. Um, good morning. Uh, good morning, good afternoon to everybody. Thank you so much, Paul. Johnson & Johnson is a proud sponsor of the MedTech Innovator Asia Pacific competition. And I do want to first thank MedTech Innovator, the judges, and the finalists for their commitment to developing the breakthrough healthcare solutions of tomorrow. It's a huge honor to be here today to present the JLabs Award to a company with a solution that has the potential to make a transformational difference to the lives of people everywhere. Johnson & Johnson Innovation JLabs as Paul mentioned, is a global network of 13 incubators created with the aim to remove obstacles and help innovators unleash the potential for their early stage ideas by providing the infrastructure, capital, and expertise they need to succeed. This award includes one year's residency at J Labs at Shanghai, the largest J Labs globally and first in Asia Pacific where the awardee, as Paul mentioned, will join a network of like-minded individuals, all working on novel solutions across pharmaceuticals, medical devices, and consumer health. So now, without further ado, I am thrilled to announce the MedTech Innovator J Labs Award goes to Sporogenics. Congratulations. We can't wait to welcome you at J Labs at Shanghai. Thank you, J&J, &J, and thank you, Sharon. Um, well, this is really a surprise for me. Um, um, well, I'm really lost for words, and uh, <laughs> so I'm just uh, beyond, uh, uh, you know, beyond words right now, but uh, thank you so much, J&J, uh, &J, and I'm really looking forward to have a very uh, collaborative and uh, partnerships with J&J as to bring to the benefits of all patients globally. Thank you so much, j, &J. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's do another round of applause. Dr. Wei Bing Ung. Fantastic. I'm very jealous. I've always wanted to have an office at J-Labs, so I'm going to make sure that I'm going to come visit you. <laughs> uh, all right. Thank you again, Sharon, as well. Um, terrific having that partnership with you. Thank you. Um, all right, so now we've had the, the awards that you've heard about from our partners. We're moving on now to the big one. Um, this is pretty exciting. Every year, MedTech Innovator um, is really lucky to have this incredible opportunity to work with innovators from all over the world, um, leading innovators, the top, the, literally the cream of the crop, all over the globe, um, and in Asia Pacific, it has just been incredible to meet the companies um, that we have in this year's program. They have just completely blown us away. As I mentioned before, some of the best pitches we've ever seen at MedTech Innovator were just 
done here today. So um, I know these competitions are very tight, um, and it is difficult always in terms of the number of votes uh, to know who's going to win these things. Uh, but at the end of the day, it always works out. I always say MedTech Innovator, the program itself is the prize. So for all the companies that are in the accelerator cohort, all of them are winners. Um, for all the companies that competed today, every single one of them is a finalist and is a winner, which means every single one of them wins at least a $10,000 prize. Um, but one of the companies is going to win the grand prize of $150,000. So I'm going to go ahead and announce the winner right now. So um, after our vote and after the MedTech Innovator 2020 Asia Pacific program has concluded, the winner of this year's competition is Excel. <laughs> Sebastian, congratulations. You want to say a few words? Wow. I mean, it, 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 it's coming today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say, honestly. This is, uh, I mean, given the excellence of the other pitches i'm 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 really humbled uh, this is um this is really unexpected um, thank you so much and um um we'll do everything to live up to expectations i want to say um thank you for this opportunity thank you you know you've been uh, you've been a great participant in medtech innovator let me give uh, another round of applause here first uh, for everybody in the gallery here for excel on behalf of all of our partners from Siemens Health and Ears and Olympus and Nipro um, and Johnson and Johnson, uh, I know Enterprise Singapore, everybody. I mean, I mean, Align Technology. We've just got this incredible group of, of partners who have been supporting you and supporting these companies, and we are just so lucky to have this opportunity. Uh, I'm very impressed by what you guys have done at Excel. Um, it's really, it's really tremendous. All the companies were terrific today. Uh, you know, I really have to say that, you know, when, when you know, it's not just something that we say, it's, it is 100% true. All the companies did an amazing job. The results, I was watching the votes and they were pretty much tied most of the way through. And then at the end, you know, Excel just kind of powered through and, uh, and, and took the lead. So congratulations, Sebastian. Um, you know, terrific job, great pitch. To other team members, Joe and Seb G are also on the Zoom call. Yeah, I'm going back, I'm going back to the view so they can wave. You guys want to wave if you guys are here on the Zoom call? Congratulations to Team Excel. Fantastic. And again, for everyone who's here, you know, everyone who's here on the call with us today, um, you know, Oliver Healthcare Packaging, I didn't mention you before, Alden. Terrific. I mean, what an amazing partner. You guys are all just fantastic. We're extremely lucky to have you guys all as partners. Um, I want to make sure I take a minute for everybody again. Um, say a few words, say anything you guys want. You can talk. Paul, I think uh, I just want to say uh, from Johnson & Johnson, it's been a pleasure again to uh, sponsor the Asia Pacific MedTech Innovator Program. Uh, certainly there was a number of curveballs thrown at all of us this year with COVID and the way we went about it, who would have thought this time last year that we would uh, we'd be going about it this way. But I actually uh, just want to say an outstanding program. Uh, again, as it's been mentioned a number of times, the caliber of the presentations, not only the finalists, but all the way through uh, this year has has been awesome uh, and again we're just seeing uh, really truly unique innovation coming out of Asia Pacific not only for Asia Pacific but beyond and um, that's really special to be a part of that so again on behalf of Johnson Johnson um, congratulations Excel uh, exciting uh, and Sporogenics looking forward to uh, working with you at J Labs um, with Sharon so again on behalf of J&J &J, a big thank you uh, exciting to look forward to next year as well. Terrific. Thank you, Peter. And thank you for being such an incredible supporter and partner. Um, we're very lucky to have a chance to work with you. Um, and I'm looking forward to coming back to Singapore as soon as, uh, as, soon as Singapore will, will, will let us uh, come, come on in. Um, all right. Um, any others want to say a few words? Hi, everyone. I'm Dan Wang, the head of Johnson Johnson Innovation Asia Pacific. I want to congratulate all the winners of MedTech Innovator Grand Finals competition in this year. I also want to thank MedTech Innovator for inviting Johnson Johnson to be part of this year's competition. MedTech is one of the key strategic focus areas at Johnson Johnson Innovation. 
we will continue to work very closely with the MATEC ecosystem partners to accelerate innovation for patients and physicians across Asia Pacific and around the world. Thank you. And also congratulations again. Oh, Paul, I'm going to jump in. It's Alpes. Of hey, Alpes. course, I mentored the Excel team, so. Oh. You did. Congratulations. <laughs> that was a great, so, that was a great job uh, mentoring I'm Alpes. I'm delighted. I have a vested the interest in their, in, in their winning, of course, but no, well-deserved. And of course, congratulations to the other teams as well. Thank you, Alpes. We really appreciate your mentoring this year and for being such an important part of our program. Of course. All right. Who else wants to say a few words? Tomiko. Hi, thank you so much. It was really fun this year. This was Nipro's first year with uh, MedTech Innovator APAC, but we are so impressed, so surprised, and I, we really, really loved everyone's passion and energy. This is really our favorite event. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's terrific working with you and Ryota and the other members of the, the Nipro team. You guys are just terrific. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank and of you course, for, uh, having us, uh, Nipro Corporation. Uh, yeah, we are uh, very excited and uh, congratulations, Excel team. Uh, so uh, we also learn a uh, um, uh, lot of uh, uh, for uh, uh, this uh, during this program. Yeah, uh, very uh, good program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, terrific to have you here. Um, uh, Kiyoshi, you want to say a few words on behalf of Olympus? Yes, uh, the congratulations winner uh, EXA and the congratulations uh, Sportgenics. So that we were enjoying the uh, mentoring and attending the, some conferences uh, the, through this program. So that we are very glad to see the, the, the winning uh, Sportgenics. So therefore, very, very, very congratulations of uh, those winners. Thank you. Thank you, Kiyoshi. Um, Alden, you want to say a few words? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Paul. Um, yeah, for us, so this was our first year, um, you know, uh, assisting and kind of mentoring and going through the program. Uh, obviously, a lot of unknowns with, with COVID and, and using a digital only platform with such an international group. But, uh, you know, reflecting back, um, you know, we really enjoyed our time and, and uh, getting to know all the uh, new technologies that are going to be coming to the market in the next few years. Um, I think I learned personally a lot from, from a lot of the other judges and kind of seeing what they look for in a good startup and, you know, the few that were selected in the top five and, and uh, really excel and uh, Sporogenics. I mean, you know, coming through, uh, it's really apparent that you all exhibited kind of all those key criteria that, um, you know, a lot of the judges are looking for in a good startup and a product that's going to be successful. So, you know, great job to all of you. Congratulations. And, um, you know, Paul, I think to your team, I mean, to me, uh, you know, we do a lot of these kind of webinars and setups. They're really not easy to do. And I know the amount of work that goes on in the background and the way you guys presented this and structured this was just really well done. So, so kudos to you guys as well. And thank you for having us. Thank you, Alden. Uh, you guys are terrific partners. As I said before, we've had terrific uh, remarks from uh, all the different people who've been working with you guys. Um, it's been great. Uh, Florian, you want to say a few words? Yeah, sure. I, as I mentioned already, I think I really enjoyed being here and, uh, and the name of Siemens Healthineers, I'm happy to be part of that program. We decided to do that the first year. So we are newcomers here, but uh, we really enjoyed being there. And big congratulations to, congratulations to Excel. You really deserved it. It was a great presentation, but also the, the product you are having in mind is really a, a great, great uh, step forward when it comes to cancer treatment. Um, so it was a great pleasure for, be, for me being here and Siemens Healthineers enjoyed being at that competition. Looking forward to the next year. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Line Technology. Hi, Paul. On behalf of Align, I think uh, uh, it's our first year really participating in this program. I would have to say it's very exciting and refreshing to see a lot of people, like a lot of companies and group of people that are really passionate 
are really energetic about the things that they do. And uh, I think you can see that from the presentation that they did. There's a lot of passion behind it. It's not just only the business. So uh, it's been great experience. Uh, I learned a lot and uh, I hope that we would be able to have this opportunity together again. And uh, really good, uh, great arrangement that uh, you and your team have done this year. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, and thank you for uh, representing Align. Uh, I know Lionel's here too, but uh, you guys are terrific, and we love working with you guys. You're a terrific team, and we really appreciate it. Um, there's a lot of great J and J Red in those backgrounds. Um, you guys are uh, representing really well. Um, also, Gabriel Sim is here from APAC Med, um, who is our partner uh, in organizing the event. So, uh, Gabriel, you want to say a few words? Uh, thanks, Paul. Yeah, so uh, th this is our second year of partnership with uh, MedTech Innovator. Uh, and already, you know, just uh, in a span of two years, uh, we've seen how the, the program uh, have grown. Uh, very, very strong uh, pipeline of uh, applicants. Uh, very strong uh, finalists, the top 20 and, and the top uh, five. So congratulations to uh, Excel and, and the rest of the other finalists. And we look forward to continuing our partnership with MedTech Innovator next year. Thank you, Gabriel. We really look forward to uh, working with you as well again uh, next year. Um, and uh, Delon from Enterprise Singapore is here as well. Um, uh, I'm sure you'll look forward to hosting us, right, Delon, next year? <laughs> Definitely, yeah. If you guys are still considering Singapore, of course. <laughs> but um, just, just to, 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 to represent uh, Enterprise Singapore, just to, to express our gratitude, uh, gratitude towards uh, Frederick, Sakina, as well as Paul, and of course, I think the broader MedTech Innovator team um, for the very successful run again this year. Um, I think through this journey, as always, we had the opportunities to see the best innovation coming out from APEC, and, and that's really our learning. And, and we are, and, and I think last, and last but not least, congrats to Excel, Sporogenics, and all the other finalists uh, that has made it thus far. It has been uh, an interesting journey this year. Uh, mostly help virtual, but um, I, I think uh, we have benefited a lot uh, through through this program, and uh, we're looking forward to working together with the companies uh, to to expand the operation in Singapore as well. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Delon. So, and uh, and of course, uh, you know, as I said, the MedTech Innovator Cohort, you guys are really the stars of all this. We couldn't do this without you. There'd be nothing for us to be celebrating um, or be doing if it wasn't for the MedTech Innovator companies. So let's give another big round of applause, not only for the winners today, but also for the whole cohort. Congratulations. <laughs>